moving on from that one i wanted to quickly also touch upon this this story broke a couple of days ago it's regarding a lady called nguzu ngozi sorry for laney lady suzanne hussey's race comments were abuse says charity boss i love that the person she's accusing it her name is lady susan hussey right lady susan forty lazy susie and hori haha <laughs> get it because it's hussey means anyway so ngozi ngozi fulani she's a head of a charity that's meant i think it's a charity for awareness about domestic abuse called sister space if i'm not mistaken and she was at some function that i think was to do with sister space her own charity and lady Hus lady susan hussey was also there they get they happen to cross paths and get into some sort of conversation and the conversation then sort of die gets to a point where lady susan hussey asks and guzi fulani where she's from and they get into this really i think hilarious conversation that i've often had myself in certain spaces which i can understand why someone would think it's racist but to be honest having read the exchange and seen different accounts of it it just sounded like to me two ladies having a bit of a polite bitchy moment right where they were both trying to um sun each other if that's a term that makes any sense but they were trying to be polite about it and not offend that's what it kind of sounds like to me. It doesn't really sound like people that Lady Susan Hussey was trying to be racist, in my opinion. It just sounds like they both think very highly of themselves. They both are maybe eyeing each other up and down, checking out each other's jewels, checking out each other's clothes, and they decided to get into this weird, you know, underlying, you know, hate on hate verbal exchange that basically resulted in Lady Susan Hussey losing her job because everyone <laughs> thinks she's racist for asking a lady who looks like this where she might be from like absolutely crazy but anyway let's play the clip from bbc news that i think i clipped on my twitter that i can show you that can kind of tell you a little bit about the exchange and you can judge what you think if, if this was a racist exchange or not see where are you from miss fulani sister space no where do you come from we're based in hackney no what part of africa are you from <laughs> i don't know they didn't leave any records uh... lady hussey went on no, but what nationality are you? I am born here and I'm British. No, but where do you really come from? Where do your people come from? My people, lady. What is this? <laughs> lady Hussey, oh, I can see I'm going to have a challenge getting you to say where you're from. When did you first come here? Miss Fulani, lady, I am a British national. My parents came here in the 50s. Oh, I knew we'd get there in the end. You're Caribbean. <laughs> no, lady, I am of African heritage, Caribbean descent, and British nationality. So you're Caribbean. But anyway, you know the funny thing is, I really wish the BBC narrator said Lady Nguzi Fulani's accent in like a faux Nigerian accent or something. That would have been so hilarious. She's probably not even Nigerian, but you know, kind of conventional go to African accent everyone does is Nigerian or Ghanaian or some sort of mix between the two. I'd love it if she did, if he did her in voice. <laughs> It would be like meta or meta or meta, innit? But bless Luz and Susan Hussey. Um, Luz and Suze, Lord, fuck, you know, her flipping name is horrendous, innit? Lady Susan Hussey, bless her. I don't think she deserves to lose her job because she lost her job at the back of this. My thoughts and feelings on this, just from an outsider perspective. I have empathy for both sides. I understand as annoying as I think this lady is, Lady Su Lady Ngozi Fulani, because I do think she's a bit of a professional victim. Like she ran to this and is basically using this as a little five minutes of fame. She got the woman flipping sex from her job like it's it's like it's giving hater it's giving hater energy there was no real re reconciliation um she she basically saw the worst intent possible in the things that that lady said um she was invited to have some sort of face-to-face -face conversation with lady susan hussey at the whatever buckingham palace and i guess she probably maybe rejected it in a mark of solidarity of her people i don't know some nonsense but essentially took away i guess the attention from her chariot that she's got that was she fighting for a good cause and it kind of made it all about her which maybe was the whole point because i have this weird theory that maybe like i said before that they kind of just got into like a woman fight like verbally right passive aggressive verbal fight that kind of weirdly centered around where you're from but i also maybe think you know she's doing this she has this charity it's doing great things. It's obviously advocating for a good cause. Um, she gets a decent turnout at her event at her gala. It's all about her. Everyone's shaking their hands, you know, kissing her cheek. She's having a good time. And then suddenly Lady Susan Hussey walks in and all the attention shifts towards her because she's by extension a member of the royal family. And suddenly now you've been upstaged at your own event. 
So in order to kind of bring somebody down, you get into this conversation and you make it all about yourself and you've kind of become the star of the show again, once again. Again, that's a bit of a reach, a bit of a hot take, but hey, it's YouTube, it's podcasting. You've got to do these things from time to time. I have sympathy for Lady Nguzi Fulani because I, like myself, I have sympathy for Nguzi Fulani because with my name, I often get the where you're from conversation a lot and it can be annoying, but I understand that I also have a name that isn't, the most common name in the world right i'm pretty sure a lot of you haven't bumped into uh, you know many agostino zingas out there in the world and if you have they definitely let me know i'd love to see what these people look like but i'm sure i'm pretty okay with my name being uncommon and people maybe having questions as to why a guy that looks like myself would have a name that sounds italian that sounds you know um portuguese that might sound spanish to some people whatever it may be right? i understand people have those kind of questions and i'm open to speaking about them i don't really give a shit too much about it but i'm also not one of these people who places too much value in that kind of level of identity to the point where it makes my whole identity you know how people walk around with like the african continent thing as a necklace and stuff i'm not really that i'm not patriotic when it comes to africa i'm not patriotic when it comes to the uk whatever i'm born i'm born wherever i live i live i just think the the value of a person isn't necessarily determined about where they're from which is cool identity is one thing to get behind but it's about who you are as an actual person who you eventually grow up to be the lessons that you learn the relationship you have with people all these things are probably way more important than where you are from as being the defining part of your character and who you are and framing your whole entire personality and i think it's a little bit i don't know it's a little bit offensive to everyone's intelligence to somehow take an innocuous question like somebody asking you where you're from when you're legitimately dressed like i said before where you go out sort of dressed in this particular way which is not no should not shame on the lady but she clearly goes out wearing certain garments you know with a certain style with a certain twist on them for whatever effect whether it's comedic whether it's what she really thinks looks good on her whatever it may be but honestly you can't say why are you asking me where i'm from when you look like this i'm sorry you just can't it's like guys who get offended if somebody asks them oh are you into fashion and you're wearing a rainbow coat or something right or you've got your hair or you've got flipping or you're wearing a skirt with tabby sandals and stuff and people are asking questions about where your skirt from where your shoes from and you start getting offended at that stuff don't be an idiot the common everyday person outside is wearing you know for them flipping they her sneakers are spicy so imagine if you're walking down the street with a pair of tabbies and a tartan skirt on of course they're going to ask you where you're from why are you wearing that what are you into blah 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 it's a, it's a standard question any regular civilian would ask and if anything you should probably be way more excited to share your story and your inspirations and your interests with the average everyday person then it would be with somebody that's just going to suck your dick anyway in terms of people that are into stuff that you're into if you're in your little scene of you know activists and um what you what you call it um people that own charities and have these little because i always feel like the charity people and the theater people especially in local council and stuff they all have the similar kind of like this exists in every kind of council i feel like around london these kind of like you know whatever i don't know how to call them but they've got them in all flipping places it's all well and good talking around to yourself and having that kind of banter but it's pretty I think it's of more importance if you're able to share your culture, your traditions and your love for whatever it may be with the everyday person and get them educated on it in some way, shape or form and maybe get them interested in it to the point where they might want to donate, they might want to participate, they might want to, I don't know, advocate for you and share the stuff that you're doing. That's far more interesting, I feel like, than just kind of preaching to the choir who am i to tell somebody whether whether or not they should be offended at what people say to them but i honestly do think this is really regrettable and a really kind of sad situation because if i'm not mistaken lady susan hussey did step down which i think is absolutely crazy it says here occurs to the bbc article you see her in the car backseat car here with um um the late great lizzie it says here lady susan hussey was a key figure in the royal household for many decades having started working for the royal family in the same year the queen was giving birth to prince andrew in 1960 i'm sorry bro if this woman was around when prince andrew was born and you're expecting her to to be woke you are an absolute cunt i swear to god you are a cunt if you expect her to be woke and she was around she was working for the royal family when prince andrew was born not that she was born then she was working for them fuck you know she had, she had an n9 number in 1960 are you crazy and Buckingham Palace announced last week that Lady Hussey and other former ladies in waiting would subsequently be known as ladies of the household, a role which involves helping to um, host occasions at the palace. Actually, she wanted Lady Hussey to resign. This is what I think was the evil part of it from the Ngezi Fulani. Fulani, sorry. She asked Lady Hussey if she should resign or if she would if she would accept her apology. Miss Fulani said, I would have preferred if it did not happen. So again, this continued passive aggressive, not saying what you actually feel like 
verbal spat that they had continued in the after comments instead of saying yeah fuck that bitch sack her because she tried to insult me and basically call into question my britishness or englishness she then decides to go in this kind of mm, i would have preferred it if it didn't happen actually like if, if it was like she if it was like she should be doing it with claps i would have preferred if it did not happen that's what it kind of feels like that kind of spicy you know um twitter flipping snap your neck kind of nonsense thing that people do it continues i have to keep the focus where it should be and that's against violence against women and girls no it isn't the focus is you look that's the focus every media flipping piece that's come out has had her blocking front and center you know flapping her yums about her bloody being racially abused because somebody dared to ask her where she was from why she's wearing african continent earrings like get out of here man this lady is fucking horrible i would listen to conversations um leader of the w women's Equ equality party mandu reed told bbc that lady hussey's questioning had been offensive racist and unwelcoming cool this is where i agree with this lady here Let's take out one word. Offensive, maybe. Unwelcoming, yes. If you're at a gala or at some event, especially at those kind of, you know, tuxedo type events, don't ask me where I'm from. Don't get into a political argument or whatever, maybe. Make it fun. Make it loose. Ask me about sports. Let's talk about, I don't know, what Kanye said. Let's talk about some album. Um, whatever else it may be. But making it all about race and politics and stuff is a bit boring. Maybe intrinsically those events are, uh, you know, opportunities for you to advocate for whatever social thing that you're doing, which is intrinsically tied to politics maybe but it would be nice if those things could be a bit loose where you get a chance to kind of talk shop and be a little bit r-rated with people in your little scene and you know you're not being recorded and you know this is kind of a closed event so you can kind of let the hair down and be a bit crazy and hang out and just speak normally and talk off the talk off the cuff but offensive i definitely agree Un unwelcome him of, co of course maybe because it's your event also but racist come on come on man nasir asval a former chief prosecutor of the crown prosecution service <laughs> look at they getting involved to flip and talk about this who was also at the reception said lady hussey also asked him about his heritage once and seemed to accept my answer manchester currently now chancellor of the university of manchester added racism is never far away all right cool oh who would have thought that a royal family that looks like that may have racist elements about them. <gasps> the shock and the horror. Pikachu face. But I honestly don't think that Lady Susan Hussey co conversation was that. I honestly don't. But it does make you believe that um, conversation that um, Meghan Markle said they had where they were kind of wondering what colour her baby would come out and stuff. <laughs> For sure I could have pictured them having that kind of conversation. But I don't think they're racist. <laughs> Uh, in a statement on wednesday buckingham palace said we take this incident extremely seriously and investigated immediately to establish the four details in this uh, instance unacceptable and deeply regrettable comments have been made we have reached out to nguzi fulani on this matter and are inviting her to discuss the elements of her experience in person if she wishes if it's that traumatic and that hurt, hurtful to you you shouldn't go really you shouldn't make it another occasion to go she probably is going to go and wear a flipping black lives matter dress or some bullshit like that i'm pretty much sure but if it really was distressing you should stay at us at home and you shouldn't be you shouldn't want to voluntarily go and speak to your abusers face to face just so they can hear your piece they've heard your piece already if you're really about that life but you know she, she she's not really shy of the limelight this lady doesn't seem like he continues in the meantime the individual concerned would like to express her profound apologies for the hurt cause and has stepped aside from her honorary role with immediate effect that is so horrendous man lady susan hussey has seen you know many many things in her life has lived a very rich and privileged life has been able to kind of ride on the coattails of the royal family for decades upon decades living a cushy life where she gets to the queen gets to take a, a flipping teddy bear that's handed to her by a peasant in the street and she hands it to lady hussey who then hands it to another servant who then hands it to another servant who then hands it to another servant who puts it into a bag and it goes and it ends up in some bin somewhere at the back of buckingham Palace. right such an easy and hard life to live and now it's all been taken away because she dared to ask some black lady <laughs> with dreadlocks <laughs> and african continent <laughs> earrings um where she's from oh my god absolutely hilarious absolutely amazing but also i legitimately wish i had the ability to be such a victim and to play the race card to this extent i, I do use it as a bit of a bit in real life um those who know me in real life will know that i, I do love to play the whole race card thing as a as a bit of a bit as a joke 
and kind of lean into it a little bit but in real life i can never be that guy who kind of sees white supremacy and oppression in every little thing that happens in my life like every time i get a no from a job or write back in reply you're racist or something right i wish i could be that person that could be happy with being a racial hire that would kind of champion um reparations that will champion affirmative action type things but i just can't i really can't i think it's really beneath people in general to use victimhood especially in the 21st century and beyond as a point to sort of launch your career or as a way to sort of advocate for the things you're saying or to increase your platform i think it's disgusting and it's in it's insult to your intelligence everyone's intelligence because if in any if anything i'd much rather try and compete on the playing field like everyone else does don't get me wrong is it harder to compete on the playing field when you do come from a marginalized community of course you don't have the same access to resources you don't have the same starting position you don't have the same connections and opportunities we know this blah 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 get out the violins but i think that journey is far more rewarding than you know saying then your journey being you'll propel to this point where you now become an advocate and a spokespeople spokesperson for black people which she's certainly not because you're not speaking for me because you had this this kind of throwaway bitchy flipping exchange with an old lady where you were both trying to stunt on each other and it kind of devolved or they, you know dissolved into some weird racial thing it's not racism it's just two old ladies having a spat and it ended horribly for one old lady clearly someone has to pay but i think it's ridiculous and the reaction to it has been quite quite silly the only other the only interesting part about it has been the surprise that some white people have had about this question and the fact that I guess if you're white, you don't really ever have people asking you where you're really from. But for me, it's stuff has really happened quite often, especially when you say, you know, I have a name like mine. I come from the country I come from. I'm born in a different place. I'm, you know, I brought up here. I have this accent. All these things come into play. So it clearly is something that can intrigue some people. But I feel like if you're not black or you're not from, you know, a minority community, you probably have never had to face up to those kind of questions. So to even hear somebody take offense to where you're from it can sound a bit trite but i can understand why it can get a bit annoying but to say that that's a racism is really really beyond but i don't think racists legitimately care about where you're from that's just my opinion <laughs> i think if anything they want to bomb where you're from they don't want to care about where it is and what you guys do that would be my thinking anyway but hey what do i know what do i know